So let's rank the Fast and the Furious franchise. Big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to as the Big D. This time around, I'm going to rank all 10 films, all 10 overall films in the Fast and the Furious franchise. I gotta tell you, after seeing F9 recently, which that review's already done so well, it's been out all the other reviews, I'm impressed. But, first of all, if you've not seen my reviews for those movies, click on that playlist coming out, there we go. So, you can catch and watch you might have missed, or see them again if you'd like. Uh, before this ranking ever begins, I will give you a few seconds before I get into this here ranking. Okay, now, I gotta tell you, this was kind of a tough list to make, but I managed to get through this. So, I've ranked all of them, I've seen all of them, though a few I can got a chance to revisit it over time, but at least I got to see some of those before I saw F9. Well, which one of these is tops in my book? Let's just fasten our seatbelts and find out. So, get ready, and here we go. Number 10 is... The Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift from 2006. Now, this I kind of turned down a little bit since it didn't have any original characters. But after I finally got to watch it, it's reasonable. It's an okay good movie. I don't hate it much. I know this kind of got a lot of hate on. Well, maybe unlike um, later, well, the next one, though, but or the previous one. But even so, I did get some good performances in this, including performances from Lucas Black and all them others. Uh, yeah, again, it wasn't too bad. Uh, I'd still say it's reasonable enough. Not, again, it's not the best of the franchise, so that's why it's at the bottom of the chain. Still, it's pretty good. Number nine is... Too Fast, Too Furious from 2003. Well, this is pretty awesome in ways, but it isn't really that the best either, but it does have a little bit of fun action. Paul Walker returns, well, as this picks up after the events of the, the first one, and we get introduced to Roman Pierce, played by Tyrese Gibson, who would become a staple of the series. We still got some pretty good performances from those two. Ava Mendez was good. Cole Hauser, who played the bad guy in this, and Lula Chris, who also would become a staple in the franchise. Yeah, I do like it being a fast one taking place in Miami. I gotta say, that was pretty awesome. I just really will say that Too Fast, Too Furious is definitely a real intense ride and what have you. Maybe not intense as some of the other movies, but still, it's pretty good. Number eight is... Fast and Furious from 2009. Now, this was the one that really got dissed big time. Well, I can understand Well, I was unable to revisit that. But I will say I have seen it before, and it's not too bad in ways. I can tell you this, it's just... Just so much intense, full thrall thrill ride and what have you. Uh, at least we brought they brought back all the original stars, including Vin Diesel and Paul Walker, Michelle Rodriguez, and Jordana Brewster. Yeah, I will say this is pre a pretty cool movie. I but I can understand why it got this in ways, but I don't care. It's still pretty good. It's just that it just didn't get much liking from the critics, but I say a lot of fans enjoyed it, I know. 
Number seven is... The Fate of the Furious from 2017. Well, despite this unfortunately got mixed reviews, unlike the, the, the previous installment, because I know a lot of people weren't too thrilled with, with Dom going bad and what have you. Because, well, he was blackmailed or something like that. But at least I can say he and all the other actors are really good. Jurors did pretty good. Jason Sam, Dwayne Johnson, Michelle Rodriguez, and Charlie Theron as the villainous Cypher. Yeah, pretty good. I went and saw this. This was the first Fast and the Furious movie I went and saw in the theater. I will say that while despite it's not that high on the list, I will say it's pretty intense and what have you. Uh, I just gotta say, it just had some pretty good action and what have you. But I know its story was a little, you know, but even so, I still thought Fate of the Furious was still a, another good thrill ride. Number six is... The Fast and the Furious from 2001, the one that started it all. I really got to enjoy this movie a few times, after, but... I gotta tell you, it was just so awesome. I mean, I like the performances we got from Vin Diesel and Paul Walker. They were absolutely really good. And what have you. I mean, this is what got me into liking Vin Diesel even more. After I saw him in uh, Pitch Black and, and also hear him voice the Iron Giant, I gotta say, this is what made me begin to like him a little more. Before he even did Triple X the following year, of course, this was they were both directed by Rob Cohen, and I just gotta say, The Fast and the Furious is definitely an awesome movie. I like the street racing moments. That's all I can tell you. It was just so fun, and that's why it's a good movie. All right, top five. Number five is. Hobbs and Shaw from 2019. Now, of course, this was a spinoff of the Fast and the Furious franchise, but it was the ninth film overall in the franchise. I gotta tell you, this was an awesome movie. Of course, it was the second film I went and saw in the franchise. Dwayne Johnson and Jason Sam definitely, once again, nail it as Hobbs and Shaw. They are... Just so good. Idris Elba, who plays the bad guy, is really good, too. I just gotta tell you, it's it really brought back the good old days of the buddy flicks and what the buddy action comedy and what have you. I mean, like um, films we saw long before this, like Lethal Weapon and what have you, which I will be reviewing that franchise next year for the film's the original film's 35th anniversary. Just thought you know I know that. But anyway, Hobbs and Shaw was just so awesome. It took place after the events of the Fate of the Furious. I just gotta say, Hobbs and Shaw became a pretty darn good team considering they were, yeah, you know what I mean. It was just a fun blast. Number four is... Part of my head of being someone I showing the picture. It's the current movie F9. Now, which I just found managed to save the box office big time after we've had some humiliating I mean, for some good flicks the last for the last three weeks and what have you. But this managed to save the summer blockbusters big time. With a 70 million opening? That's fine with me. It may not come close to the, well, the, the previous ones, well, except for Hobbs and Shaw, because it surpassed that film's opening. <laughs> I just gotta say, I know it got mixed reviews in YV. I can understand a lot of people that, well, don't um, like this much as the others, but hey, I'm cool with it. 
I mean, I'm I'm easy enough to try and be nice, and let everybody have their own opinions on this, whether it's good or bad. If you can appreciate my um negativity on some things, I can too, as long as I'm trying to be generous. But there are times when I can get a little, you know. But anyway, F9 was just a blast. I mean, now I did, like I said in my review, with, uh, had a bit of a problem with Roman in some parts, and some of the humor was kind of um, a miss in some parts, but more a hit than miss. But even so, I thought it had some intense action sequences and all that jazz. I thought it was fun. I hope for the best we'll do more, because I know Universal's got gonna try and do another one, and possibly a Hobbs and Shaw sequel down the road. So we'll hope for the best. But F9 was so much fun, I really got a good kick out of it. Number three is... Fast and Furious 6 from 2013. And this was released um, the year that Paul Walker died unexpectedly. But um, he managed to finish filming... Um, the next movie after this, we'll see whether if that one's tops or not. Find out in a little bit. But Fast and Furious 6, well, I gotta revisit that film someday. But I do remember checking it out. It was awesome. And after all, like the previous one, it's kind of a bit of a heist and what have you and what have you. But boy, oh boy. Now, I do like the performance... We got from everyone, and um, Luke Evans, who plays the main baddie, is really something. I mean, we got performances from all the stars we saw in the last few movies. And we got um, Gal Gadot um, in this. Well, she'd appear in the previous one. Well, this was still before Wonder Woman. Gina Carano, well, who was formerly an American Gladiator, the Gladiator known as Crush, was in this. Of course, she was also on The Mandalorian. But anyway, Fast and Furious 6, it's pretty awesome. I do remember having a fun time of watching this, though. It's still awesome, though. Now for the final two. This was kind of a tough decision. <laughs> now nah, I'm just playing with y'all. This was an easy decision. Number two is... Fast Five from 2011. Now, I will say that this proved to be the first big success for the franchise. And the first of only two films in the franchise to get certified fresh on Ryan Tomatoes. Well, I gotta say, and this of course went from being just street racing most of the time to, uh, you guessed it, a heist. This was so cool. And I really got to enjoy this a whole lot. Um, let's see here. Yeah, it was just so awesome. We also get introduced to Luke Hobbs, played by Dwayne Johnson, who absolutely does an amazing job in this. Just like he would in the next few movies leading up to Hobbs and Shaw. Overall... I gotta say, Fast Five is super awesome, and what can I say? Got a good kick out of it for its, well, story and making a heist movie. It was awesome. Number one is... Furious 7 from 2015. Now, this was the best of the bunch. And this got even more good response than its predecessor. It was just so much awesome. Again, same great cast in one of you. We have Jason Stam on board as Deckard Shaw. Awesome. Let's see. Um, Jamon Hunsu's in this. Really good. Of course, we have um, Kurt Russell in this as Mr. Nobody. Definitely real good. I just gotta say, this had a lot of good moments in one of the all sorts of good action. This, of course, would also be Paul Walker's final film, even though after his death, 
a couple of years before this, but he managed to finish them working on this and all that jazz. But this was just so much of a blast from start to finish. This is easily the best of the Fast and the Furious franchise. And what can I say? I love it. Fur Furious 7 is so awesome. Yeah. Again, it was just a good action thriller with a little heist feel into it. It's just so awesome. You can't go wrong with this movie. Okay, that's going to do it. So, how would you rank the Fast and the Furious franchise? Please feel free to tell me in the comments section below. If you like this video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel. Be a part of the Big D Nation. And who knows what I'll give you next time. Possibly I will give you the first installment of my next two-parter on, well, rewatched movies. For the month of June, I'm decided to go ahead and do this. Get that out of the way, because I've watched numerous movies this month. So, thank you very much for watching. And if you like this, you may want to check out some of these other movies that I've reviewed this past month. Most notably, James Bond movies, which I've done this month as well. But I will continue those next month. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the first Bond movie, Dr. No. The upper right-hand corner is my review of my favorite Sean Connery Bond movie, and that was You Only Live Twice. Or, if you'd like, go to the bottom left-hand corner for my ranking of all of Sean Connery's James Bond movies, but only the Eon produced films. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.